So to all of you who have come here tonight, I would like to make my wishes of auspicious good fortune with a mind of joy and happiness. Uh, so there are a number of us gathered here tonight, uh, some who understand the sublime teachings of the Buddha, the transcendent conqueror, others who do not. Um, there are people who, here who I know very well, I know your names, others who I don't know. Yet among all of you and among all sentient beings, there is not one who has not been my kind mother or father in countless former lifetimes. Uh, and because of this, um, I see, I make no distinction among sentient beings. Uh, all beings without exception have the potential of reaching the state of fully enlightened Buddhahood. And recognizing that, uh, there is no distinction to be made. Uh, I make I have a mind of loving kindness and compassion for all sentient beings. Uh, and it is important then uh, to understand that all beings have this essence that is Buddha nature. Recognizing that, uh, we can have love for all without distinction. Uh, so, in general, among all of the different kinds of beings of the three spheres of existence, and in particular among we human beings, um, there is no one who wishes to experience suffering. In fact, all beings uh, wish to have happiness and be free of suffering. Uh, and we all engage in different kinds of effort to experience happiness. We should understand that all happiness and joy are dependent upon the two types of knowledge. Um, and all suffering is a result of ignorance or unawareness. 
呃,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你知道,你
uh, education, and so forth. Um, and although there is much benefit to be derived from this, when we look at the teachings of the Buddha, this is on an inner level, or the level of the mind itself. Um, if we truly wish to engage in practice according to our understanding of karma, cause, and effect, first and foremost we should look at the mind itself because it is in the mind where the seeds of virtue and negativity are planted. That is to say, it is in the mind where the causes of happiness and suffering are created. Tinit with regard to the inner awareness wisdom that comes from the investigation of the mind, the Buddha taught that all suffering comes from the very root of not seeing the mind's nature. And because of ignorance of the nature of mind, we give rise to various negative emotions. And on the basis of these negative emotions, we create karma, or that is to say, we engage in actions of body and speech. And on the basis of these actions, we create karmic propensities, or the habit uh, to act in a certain way. Um, in this way, then, we, uh, we don't have a great deal of control at the present time over the sufferings and happinesses that we experience. Mm <laughs> Um, all suffering without exception is the result then of ignorance. And this ignorance is self-clinging. It is fixating upon the I. Um, when we have a habit then of fixating upon that which is inherently selfless as being real, uh, then all suffering naturally results. Yet, we should understand that on a relative level, the outer container that is the physical universe is the very nature of impermanence. Every external phenomenon is subject to change. Likewise, um, all inner phenomena, that is the beings in this universe, are not real, not permanent, not inherently existent. Uh, we too are subject to change. When we truly recognize um, the inner and outer aspects of impermanence, then uh, we create a foundation for recognizing the nature of mind. This then is uh, understanding of the ultimate truth. <laughs> Then 
If we want to recognize selflessness in our own mind streams, this is very difficult to do unless uh, we habituate it for a long period of time. We should understand that since time without beginning, we have accumulated uh, a karmic propensity to fixate on the I or the self as being real. And this propensity over time has continued to accumulate like snowflakes falling. Um, eventually, it becomes uh, an extremely thick obscuration in our minds. And so even though we are able to catch glimpses of the nature of mind, we don't have the power to sustain these glimpses for any length of time. Mm. Um, so when we have an understanding of uh, the workings of karmic causality, we can see that on the basis of self-clinging, that is ignorance, we give rise to various kinds of negative emotions. Um, these habituate, or I should say, these perpetuate six different types of suffering. Now, um, because of this, then, we speak of rebirth in the six realms of existence. But we should understand this to mean um, the experience of the suffering that is the fruition of the six principal negative emotions in the mind. <laughs> Uh Chilukaka <laughs> So, when Shakyamuni Buddha first attained enlightenment, he taught... I should speak a little louder. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. So, when the Buddha first attained enlightenment, he taught the noble truth of suffering. Um, now, that is to say that all of our experiences in this uh, worldly realm or in samsara are the nature of suffering. Now, there will be others of other traditions uh, who say that this kind of teaching is not of that great of a benefit. Um, and it is true that it's difficult to hear these teachings on the nature of suffering. It is bitter to listen to them. Yet, if we don't understand the nature of suffering, then we will not have the capability of overcoming suffering. Um, if, on the other hand, we know and understand the nature of suffering, uh, a fear of suffering will naturally arise in our mind stream. And on the basis of this fear, then we will seek to um, overcome and purify the causes of suffering. Now, um, we speak in the Buddhist tradition of the hell realm and the hungry ghost realm, um, but it isn't really necessary to think of these as separate uh, places. Rather, we can look at our own experience in this human realm and see the sufferings of all of the six realms. There are people who are undergoing extremes of suffering as a result of heat and cold, hunger and thirst, uh, war and fighting, and so forth. In this way, simply through observing uh, our own human experience, we can come to an understanding of the six realms of existence. Um, if then we have this kind of understanding, uh, we give rise to wisdom in our own minds. We give rise to faith and understanding of the Dharma teachings. There will be those who say, well, you speak so much about the hell realm, but I can't see it. Where, where is it? I doubt that it exists at all. This kind of thought comes from a mind of real ignorance and obscuration. If we become so focused on uh, ourselves, we can only see our own experience of suffering. When, on the other hand, we focus on others, we begin to realize their suffering as well. Um, this opens our eyes. It clears away the darkness of ignorance. Um, if we lack this kind of awareness, then as soon as we experience suffering, we think that that suffering is utterly unbearable. It is for this reason, then, that we make effort to, um, to, to study suffering as the basis or the foundation of our Buddhist practice. And then, ha having understood the nature of suffering, when we look at uh, other worldly phenomena and we see other people suffering, uh, it isn't a surprise to us. We are aware that this is the very nature of cyclic existence. Tina Oh, so in this worldly realm, there is much that we can study in the different uh, religious traditions. 
um, from the Buddhist perspective, if we truly wish to attain human birth, it is necessary to practice the ten virtues and abandon the ten non-virtuous actions. Now, we should understand that this human birth is only attained as a result of the accumulation of merit. And how or where this merit comes from is a mind of loving kindness and compassion. By cultivating this, then we naturally abandon negative actions. So, actions are accumulated through the body and the speech. But we should understand that the real doer of all actions is the mind itself. It is from the mind that all other actions uh, arise. So, for example, if we have the seed of anger in our mind stream, uh, and we don't seek to purify that anger, then naturally that seed will grow into a sprout and will eventually become strong and bear fruit. Um, so among the two types of discipline that we can engage in, that of outer conduct and that of disciplining the mind, the latter is far more important. <laughs> ทุกมือจงนะเป็นน่ะโอ้เสด็จตั้งตัวเองน่ะเสด็จจุบัวล่ะทีนี้ยืนมองมองมองมองมองมองมองมองมองมองมองมองมองมองมองมองมองมองม
ตาเมนยิงเป็นโลจิโบเลยคนยิงเป็นโลจิโบยิงเป็นโลจิโบเลยสิ่งที่จิตมันยิงบ่คำสิ่งสิ่งที่ทำเช่นเป็นอะไร
ti jure, ma ta pui va na jure, ben ne do ti ka sa ngun ta va re, ndo do ti ka sa ngun ta va jina, ti sa ngun ti jina, ti sa la jung la, ma ngun cha ya jure, la ngun sa ji yo pa, ji na ji ta ma ka long ju ji yo pa ta ri ye, ti ne do ti ka la pang jan ti ka ngun yo ma ra pe na, ti na ji re, ti ni ti ma ji ma ji ve ta, ji wa ma nyang ve ta. Ta sa ngi to 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 So according to the Buddhist view, all sentient beings of the three spheres of existence uh, possess the very cause of happiness. They all, without exception, have the Buddha nature or the enlightened potential that is inherent in the mind. Um, if we understand this, then we won't give rise to uh, a sense, well, I'm a Buddhist and that person is a non-Buddhist. There, that, that thought will not even arise in our mind stream. Uh, rather, we will recognize this enlightened potential that abides in every being that we meet. Um, we are all the same, regardless of our um, our belief systems, we're all the same in desiring happiness and wishing to be free from suffering. Um, and it is for this reason then that the Buddhas in their compassion and skill taught that we should contemplate all sentient beings as having been our kind parents. All beings have um, love in their hearts but they have it only to some small degree. We see that uh, parents naturally have great love for their children. And so we use this um, as a basis for cultivating an impartial love that extends towards all beings without exception. Um, we contemplate well the qualities of bodhicitta or the mind of enlightenment and we see that we too can give rise to these qualities because of the Buddha nature that is inherent in our mind streams if we simply engage in the practice of the six perfections. Practicing in this way then, we recognize that bodhicitta or the mind of enlightenment is like a wish-fulfilling jewel. Um, if we have uh, a small seed and we plant it in the ground and we cultivate it and care for it, it bears much fruit that benefits others and ourselves as well. The same is true if we, through the practice of the six perfections, cultivate the enlightened potential that is inherent in our minds. Um, for this reason then, the Buddha is taught how to give rise to bodhicitta um, and once having given rise to bodhicitta, uh, how to protect it and keep it from declining and cause it to ever increase. Bena, tata, you won't be tuna. Maso tummy, some of tona. Chili given a jacob jacob of pana. She had done my dear tato latini. Don't get a dee, you don't go mangla. Tin you get it out of Kanga talk. Oh, tata, I see you in a chum. ちょっとよんでね。おお、出たわ、外の道、下段の道、茶道の道、マジの道。どちらの道。てちゅうにね、まさかにこれ。大変なのばたんごよさん、ランゴランゴちょんごにかんまもんだべな。これ。パンのば
So we should all consider well the fault of negative emotions such as attachment, anger, uh, ignorance, pride, and jealousy. If we look in our own minds, we can find each and every one of these. Um, and thinking in this way, uh, we should become very clear that uh, all of these negative emotions that are the cause of future suffering are present in my own mind stream right now. Um, and on the basis of these negative emotions, we do harm to others. And having harmed others, we harm ourselves. Um, if we look at all of the suffering in the world today, every suffering without exception comes from negative emotions in the minds of others. The only distinction to be made is how great um, or how weak, how strong or weak those negative emotions might be. Yet, strong or weak, they are all the cause of suffering. Even in a single family, all of the difficulties and hardships that can be experienced have at their very root uh, negative emotions. So we should cultivate a wisdom that enables us to recognize negative emotions in our own minds. Um, the Buddha, the transcendent conqueror, taught uh, how from a tiny seed, um, a huge tree can grow. And the same is true of our negative emotions. Even if we, we begin with a very subtle negative emotion, if it goes unchecked, then it becomes more and more powerful and eventually uh, becomes the cause of great suffering. เออดามเบลเนี่ยมันมันละพี่บาตาเดวาดริบเนี่ยเออจะกับซอซอเกโกทริกินะเปนะอ๋อเนี่ยตังเงี้ยมันโกจีเลยเดยินเนี่ยม
all enlightened conduct naturally arises from that pure motivation. Um, we should investigate with the power of our own wisdom and intelligence what is effective and what is not. We should look at our own experience and see if our uh, altruistic motivation is truly of value or not. Uh, we should look and, and investigate uh, whether or not a positive and pure motivation uh, is endowed with power or not. We should investigate what is the cause of our own experiences of suffering. Where is its root? Um, when we investigate in this way, we can come to uh, a faith and confidence in the validity of the Dharma teachings. Mm. So first we should understand well the qualities of bodhicitta or the mind of enlightenment. This mind is like a brilliant light, more powerful than 100,000 suns. Um, at first, we cannot give rise to this powerful mind of enlightenment, but we can give rise to love for sentient beings. Um, and on the basis of that, then we can continue to cultivate it until we truly realize an impartial love for all beings. Now, uh, we should look at our own experience. If we're uh, very sad and experiencing a lot of suffering, then um, we can benefit so much from the love of another person. It is said that bodhicitta is a brilliant light that is like the sun, but this is a mere example. In fact, the light of bodhicitta cannot be seen with the eye. Uh, but if we are experiencing a great deal of suffering, and we go and sit in the sunshine, no matter how long we may sit, the sun cannot dispel that suffering. We'll only get a sunburn. But if we uh, receive a phone call or um, a letter from someone who is so near and dear to us, in that moment, uh, our suffering is dispelled by the power of the love of our companion. Uh, in this way, then, we can see from our own experience the incredible power of loving-kindness. Um, even when we see the face of a beloved friend, uh, tears will come to our eyes, and uh, whatever unbearable suffering we may have been experiencing is alleviated. Um, when we recognize the power of loving-kindness through our own experience, then that power becomes the basis for what we are to practice. We can cause that power to be increased through our practice. Um, it is the various methods then for first recognizing and giving rise to this mind of love and then causing it to increase. 
that were taught by the Buddhas. Mm. So first we should view the faults of our negative emotions such as attachment and aversion and ignorance. Likewise, we should contemplate the benefits of uh, bodhicitta or the mind of enlightenment. Now, having done that, then we should investigate karma or the workings of cause and causes and their results. If we, if we ask, where is the cause um, of happiness and suffering? It abides in the mind itself. Um, for this reason, the Buddha taught that we should accumulate virtue and abandon negative actions. Um, but what this really means is that when we contemplate well that all sentient beings have been our kind parents and that because of ignorance uh, they are continuing to create uh, the causes of suffering, immediately we give rise to a mind of loving kindness. When the Buddha spoke of accumulating merit, what he was really referring to is giving rise to and um, cultivating this mind of loving kindness. Likewise, um, when the Buddha spoke of avoiding negative actions, then what he was really referring to is purifying the negative emotions in our own minds. When we realize that these negativities are the cause of all sufferings of others and ourselves, then naturally uh, we will seek to avoid that negativity. And by doing so, we purify uh, the negativity we have accumulated in countless former lives. Mm. Now, there will be those who are critical of um, these teachings of karma, cause, and effect. Those who say, well, if we engage in virtuous actions such as the practice of generosity, um, although you say there's a positive result, 
I don't see any result. Um, there is no immediate benefit that I can recognize. Yet in fact, there is an immediate benefit. When we practice generosity, immediately uh, our habit of self-clinging is diminished. Mm. In this way, if we truly investigate, we can see that uh, all virtuous practice and all abandonment of negativity has both a temporary and a long-term fruition. So, the accumulation of merit refers to the generation and cultivation of love. The purification of negativity refers to the abandonment of negative emotions. And the ultimate fruition of this kind of practice will be that the mind becomes strong and stable. And we will think, whatever happens to me, it doesn't matter. I must engage in accomplishing others' benefit and happiness. Uh, and in this way, then, we will engage our body, speech, and mind in um, work benefiting sentient beings. It is through this kind of activity that the fruition of the three kayas, or the three bodies of the Buddhas, are achieved. Um, we, we can see that all of the benefit and happiness that's experienced in this worldly realm is due to the kindness of the Buddhas. Um, that is to say, that through the power of the aspiration prayers made by the Buddhas, we experience um, uh, the pleasure of life in this human realm. Um, the, the earth, the sunlight, fruits, flowers, and so on, all come through the aspiration prayers made by the enlightened ones. Um, and so in this way, when we give rise to a mind of uh, altruism, seeking to benefit others, we too are establishing the causes for sentient beings' benefit and happiness. <laughs> Then Corn, Tamu Take so we should contemplate well the qualities of the bodhicitta, or the mind of enlightenment. Um, this mind of enlightenment is brilliant like the sun. Um, the qualities of the mind of enlightenment are naturally, effortlessly, and spontaneously arisen. Um, just as the sun naturally gives rise to rays, uh, or a flower naturally gives rise to nectar. 
Um, so if we have this mind of enlightenment as the view or the basis, then from that we engage naturally in perfect conduct that benefits others. This conduct is referred to as the six perfections. Uh, the first and foremost of these is um, transcendent awareness wisdom. Whenever we look into our own minds and we see the qualities of loving kindness and compassion, and we see the faults of negative emotions such as anger and jealousy, then that itself is transcendent awareness wisdom. On the basis of this, then, if we cultivate love for even one person within that relationship, we can practice all of the other uh, five perfections. That is to say, when we truly love someone, then we're free of greed and avarice towards them. This is the practice of generosity, um, the second of the six perfections in, this, in, in the list that Rinpoche has given. Uh, likewise, when we truly love someone, we don't wish to do any harm to them at all. That is the practice of morality, the third. Um, fourth, no matter how many difficulties may arise in the relationship, uh, we don't seek to retaliate with anger. This is the practice of patience. Uh, fifth, when we continually wish to bring about benefit and happiness to our friend or our loved one, this is the practice of effort or diligence. And finally, um, when we maintain um, an unbroken feeling of love towards that person, then that is the practice of meditative stabilization. In this way, in a single relationship of loving kindness, we can practice all of the six perfections. Mm. <laughs> Don't ᱚᱞᱮ <laughs> Oh, Oh, 
ซึ่งนําพาตาเลยโยมิตักเชตาเลยเดบิซึ่งนําพาตาเลยสังเกตเห็นเด้เนี่ยเด้คนละรานซุกรานดังกะเรยโยมาเลยเด้เป็นน่
if again and again uh, we contemplate this and engage in Dharma practice, then eventually we will become the same as the fully enlightened Buddha. This is because we possess the Buddha nature or the enlightened potential. This is inherent in the minds of all beings. It is the seed of enlightenment. Um, all of the Buddhas were first ordinary sentient beings. And through engaging in the practice of Dharma, they purified their negativities and attained fully enlightened Buddhahood. This Buddha nature is uh, completely expansive and free from obstruction, just like the sky. Um, it is like a clear crystal. Um, the mind itself, uh, the Buddha nature I should say, is completely free from any taint. Uh, it has existed with us since time without beginning. Uh, it is through cultivating loving kindness and compassion then that we can give rise to the qualities of this mind of Buddha nature. Um, this mind is, because it is completely empty and clear, then whatever we habituate in the mind is what arises. If we habituate loving kindness and compassion, we give rise to a sublime deity. If we habituate anger and negativity, then we give rise to a demon. Um, yet, in either case, the very basis is this pristine, clear mind itself. Um, so, if we seek to accomplish others' happiness and benefit through loving kindness and compassion, without doubt we will give rise to all of the enlightened qualities of the deity. Mm. <laughs> Gare Sancho it is said that the Buddhas taught 84,000 aggregates of the Dharma, yet within each of these 84,000 are 84,000 subdivisions. Uh, thus, the, there is no limit to the teachings of the Dharma. They are like a huge mountain. Um, if we wish to engage in the practice of the Dharma, it is difficult for us to understand this multitude of teachings. Yet, all of the Buddha's teachings can be condensed into two essential points, and that is the two types of bodhicitta. Now, um, when we maintain vigilant, mindful awareness uh, of the thoughts that are arising in the mind, that itself is ultimate bodhicitta. Um, this ultimate bodhicitta is the nature of mind. When 
When we wish to see the nature of mind, it is necessary to have a great accumulation of merit to do so. And it is for this reason, then, that we practice conventional bodhicitta. This is giving rise to a mind of love and compassion. When we hold with awareness a mind of love and compassion, uh, we give rise to uh, a warmth that melts the frozen mind of self-clinging that has been accumulated since beginningless time through karmic conditioning. Um, as this, as we give rise to love and compassion, uh, this frozen accumulation begins to soften and to melt. And on the basis of that, we recognize uh, the nature of mind. The nature of mind is no different than the mind of all of the Buddhas. And when this is seen, then enlightenment is experienced. And so, although we already have present in our mind streams the Buddha nature, uh, in order to recognize that, we need to engage in the practice of loving kindness and compassion. Thus, of the two, conventional and ultimate bodhicitta, uh, the actual practice of conventional bodhicitta is most significant for us now. So we pray that all beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. This is the basis of all of the practice that we do, generating this motivation. But we should ask, what is happiness and the cause of happiness? It is transcendent awareness. Um, it is mindful awareness. Being cognizant at all times of, um, of the thoughts that are arising in the mind. And through the power of that cognition, liberating those thoughts one after the next. When we can do this, then we see the Buddha nature that is inherent in our own minds. This is the inner Lama. It is said that there are both inner and outer gurus or Lamas. Um, the outer guru is the one who offers the Dharma teachings to us, who shows us the cause of happiness and the cause of suffering. Um, the inner guru is the recognition of the Buddha nature in our own minds. Of these two, inner and outer, uh, the inner guru is the principal one. Um, when we have this kind of wisdom and awareness, then we can truly give rise to the wish that all beings be free from suffering, that all beings have just the kind of happiness that we have, uh, that all beings experience just this kind of wisdom and clarity of mind. Um, we, when we look at the situation of beings deluded by ignorance and see them creating the causes of suffering, uh, drinking alcohol and taking drugs and so forth, 
then we spontaneously give rise to this mind of love and compassion, uh, truly seeking their benefit and happiness and freedom from suffering. Uh, it is for this reason then that we contemplate again and again every sentient being as our kind parents with whom we have a profound connection. <laughs> We should consider well that if we give rise to a mind of anger, this is the cause of many sufferings. Uh, there are people whose mind streams become so ruled by anger and negativity that they even take their own lives. Um, in this way, then, um, they think that they may end their suffering. Um, yet the truth is that even after the consciousness leaves the body and it enters the um, transition phase between this life and the next, um, they still endure a host of sufferings. In fact, each seven days they relive the experience of dying. Um, and so, in this way, uh, we should truly seek to alleviate sufferings through the practice of the profound Dharma. Um, and begin then by generating a mind of love um, for our own parents who have sacrificed so much and endured so much hardship for our sake. It is because of their kindness that we have our present precious human form. Um, it is through their kindness that we have received an education, clothing, food, and so forth. Um, when we contemplate well the kindness of our, kind, of our mothers uh, who have given us this body, we, we will give rise to a mind of such gratitude and respect and devotion that tears will come to our eyes. When we have this kind of fruition, it is like uh, we have um, extracted the nectar from a flower and transformed it into honey. Mm. When we have this feeling um, of true love and respect for our parents, then we have received the full fruition of the gift that they have offered us. First, they have offered us this precious human form, and second, they have become the basis for our giving rise to a mind of extraordinary love and compassion. Um, even if someone were to give us a great deal of money, uh, there could be no more precious gift than that which has been given to us by our parents. And so if we contemplate in this way, then we have the basis 
for deeply cherishing not only our parents of this life, but all sentient beings, our parents of countless former lifetimes. เจ้าเนี่ยเจ้าที่เกี่ยวกับมันโอ้ตาเต้นนั่งอยู่ครับท่านเสพยึดตัวเนี่ยพม่ามาเจ็บตัวผมมาเจ็บเจ้าอยู
as well as in transcendent knowledge. Um, it is uh, teachers who give sight to the blind, uh, teachers who open our ignorant eyes. Um, not only do they show us how to survive in the world, uh, but they also uh, train our minds. And, um, and especially those who teach us um, the Dharma give us an inconceivable gift. Um, and so in this way we should generate a mind of gratitude to all of those who have educated us. And finally, we should generate a mind of respect and gratitude towards the leaders of our nation. Um, we should understand that through their activities, they seek to bring about uh, benefit and the common good. Um, even though we may have received an excellent education from our teachers, if we did not have um, the, the support that has been created by uh, our government, then uh, there would be no stability in the country uh, and we would endure many hardships. And so in this way, we should think again and again of the difficulties endured by uh, the leaders of our country um, for our, our benefit and others' benefit. If we truly and deeply contemplate this, uh, we, we, will, um, we will begin to cry, thinking of their great kindness for us. Um, so as we consider this, then we will truly give, mind, uh, give rise to a mind of great love, devotion, and respect for, uh, for our parents, for our teachers, and for the leaders of our country. Uh, on the basis of this kind of training, then our mind will become exceedingly strong and stable. Um, our beneficial intention will pervade the three spheres of existence. Um, we will seek to benefit all beings without exception. Um, even now, in our present awareness, we can observe people uh, who are very powerful and engage in activities that truly bring about others' benefit. Um, and likewise, we can see um, people who are beggars, they're addicted to drugs and alcohol, um, and they're completely reliant on others for their support. Um, both of these extremes come from the mind that they have cultivated. Um, and so in this way, we should cultivate great wisdom and uh, really generate qualities of faith, gratitude, and respect, um, and a motivation to be of benefit to all beings. Mm. <laughs> Papa that's <laughs> Tindi 
So, um, I have distributed a photograph this evening of a statue of um, the self-arisen Chenra Zhe, or the Bodhisattva of Great Compassion. This statue uh, was spontaneously manifest at the time of the Tibetan king, Son Zengampo, who himself was an emanation of Chenra Zig, the Bodhisattva of Great Compassion. Um, he was told by the Buddhas, uh, Chenra Zig was told by the Buddhas to manifest in the country of Tibet for the benefit of the beings there. And so he appeared as um, King Song Zengampo and has since appeared in many other um, in, in many other forms in Tibet um, and up until the present time he has continued to manifest there in order to protect sentient beings now um, the Tibetan king Song Zengampo had two consorts um, the princess from China and the princess from Nepal and at the time of the king's passing, the two consorts both dissolved physically into him and he physically dissolved into this statue of Chen Rezig. Uh, and so it is indeed a very precious statue. Since 1983, I've been distributing these pictures everywhere I go, all over the world, to many beings. Um, and simply through seeing this thing, you establish uh, a great connection with the deity of great compassion, known as Janra Zig in Tibetan or Avalokiteshvara in Sanskrit. Um, you should understand that although there are countless deities, uh, Janra Zig is like the life force of them all because he is the very nature of love. Um, Chen Rezig's mantra is written on the side of the card, Omani Padme Hong Shri. And this mantra is endowed with countless benefits. Um, I've also distributed a brief four line prayer to the deity Chen Rezig, and his mantra is also printed on here. Um, if you engage then in the recitation of this mantra, it will become a cause for the purification of um, all negative emotions, principle among which is anger. Um, and then on the opposite side of the card is Atisha's supplication to Tara. Um, and uh, she likewise is uh, an emanation of great loving kindness and compassion. In this worldly realm there are countless emanations of Tara. Um, she has manifest as the three Kayas um, and in this human realm appears as a Nirmanakaya or an emanation being in order to accomplish the benefit and happiness of all sentient beings. So, Chen Rezig is a male emanation, Tara a female emanation, but both are the very nature of loving-kindness. 
Um, if we give rise to a mind of devotion to them, it will be a cause of benefit in this and future lives. Finally, I have distributed um, this liberation through sight. On it are two mantras of the deity Chanmazik, and it is said that through the aspiration prayers made by Chanmazik, um, whoever sees these mantras or walks underneath them will have the accumulation of negativities uh, from countless eons uh, purified. Um, this is true for human beings, for animals, for beings of the spirit realm. Um, whoever, um, whoever comes into contact with this mantra will experience the benefit thereof. There are many spirit beings uh, who continually give rise to anger, and it is said that through seeing this, their anger will be spontaneously pacified, and they will not do harm to sentient beings. So these three precious things I offer to you, together with my wishes of auspicious good fortune. And I encourage you not to make false dualistic distinctions, thinking, oh, I'm a Buddhist, this person is not a Buddhist, um, but rather to see that which is common among all sentient beings, that is, the Buddha nature or the mind of enlightenment. Uh, if you can engage in practice that brings about the actual benefit and happiness of others, then this is the most significant thing. In this context, there's no distinction to be made among the different religious traditions. Gangna the <laughs> So there is one point of heart advice that I would like to offer to you this evening. Um, there are countless religious traditions to be found in this worldly realm, and we have a habit of seeing one as being good and another as being bad, and this dualistic distinction causes a great deal of suffering. If there is someone who has a mind of loving kindness, who truly wishes to be of benefit to others, then that person is a bodhisattva. Uh, regardless of their tradition. Um, and in this way, we should really uh, see sentient beings as Buddhas. Those who are accomplishing others' welfare and benefit are extremely precious. Um, when we, in this way, um, think about others whose minds are deluded by negative emotions and ignorance, we spontaneously give rise to a mind of love and compassion. We truly wish to liberate them from their suffering and ignorance. Um, so thinking in this way, we can appreciate all of those who are working
to free others from suffering, regardless of the language they speak or the tradition in which they practice. Um, we can truly give rise to compassion for beings who are deluded by ignorance. Um, we should then seek to avoid all false views um, that create unnecessary distinctions, um, and we should seek to avoid a mind wishing to do harm to others. Um, in this way, we can come to see all sentient beings as Buddhas. And it was taught by the Buddha himself that with this pure view of recognizing beings as Buddhas, our own enlightenment is close at hand. This is a very precious teaching. Um, and so I would like to request that you please recite together with me three times the uh, mantra of Chenrezig, Omani Padme Hom Pri, uh, with the motivation that all beings in this worldly realm become completely free of anger and that they abide in peace and happiness. So please let us read together the prayer on the small white card. Um, this is the side without the picture on it. Your thousand arms are the thousand Chakravartin kings. Your thousand eyes are the thousand Buddhas of this fortunate eon. I prostrate to the venerable Chandrasig, who shows whatever is needed to subdue those to be subdued. <laughs> 